Friends, at this time we are going to begin the funeral services for Ben I. Wolf. If you have a cell phone or a pager, I would ask for you to please take a moment to turn it off or place it in the silent mode. And officiating today's services will be Rabbi Stephen Hart, the Rabbi Emeritus at Temple Chai in Long Grove. Elohei Hayim, Melech HaOlam, the God of all life and the sovereign of the universe. There is a long-standing Jewish teaching that speaks of reciting 100 blessings, 100 blessings each and every day, that we should be continually, even amidst our loss and our sorrow, we should continually be in a place of praise and acknowledgement of all of our daily blessings. Of these 100 blessings, the tradition goes on to say that the most important of all, a timeless blessing, is that of gratitude. So how appropriate it is that we should begin this service of sacred and of personal memory with a shared sense of profound gratitude for Ben's life, the meaning that he brought to each of you, his essence, his soul, his neshama, his spirit, which is eternal and everlasting. May the Kadosh Baruch Hu, may the Holy One of Blessing, from whom all things come and to whom all things must return. On this day of mourning and of loss, give us light and give us peace. And may all the words that we speak and all the memories that we share bring us now comfort and strength. In Jewish tradition, such moments of loss and sorrow 
have always been acknowledged by sharing selection from the book of Tehillim, the book of Psalms in the Bible. It is through these words that our ancestors found comfort and support and healing. As is our custom and our practice, we will now turn to these same words with the hope and the prayer in each of our own hearts that these sacred thoughts will now comfort us as well. As I'd like to invite us to turn to the booklets that you have received. And on the inside, you will find the words of Psalm 23, the familiar words of the Psalmist David. Mizmor le David, Adonai ro'i lo echsar. As we'll say together, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters, restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My dear friends, it is also very fitting and very appropriate to turn as well for the recitation of the Tehillim, for the recitation of Psalms, to Psalm 112, and words that seem to have been written just for this very moment, and to describe the life and the spirit, the soul and essence of our dear friend, Ben. And the psalmist teaches Ashrei Ha'adam, blessed is the one who reveres Adonai, who greatly delights in all of God's commandments. His descendants will be honored in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. His household prospers and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright, for the one who is gracious and compassionate and just. He is not afraid of evil tidings. His mind is firm, trusting in God. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever and his life is exalted in honor. In his very personal loss, in his own sorrow and his own bereavement, the biblical Job was to carry out these words. Adonai Natan va Adonai Lakachi, he shame Adonai Mivorach, that God has given and God has taken away, blessed be the name of God. As an ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of the shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us. Yet the centuries have taught us that a shame tov, a good name, a good name endures beyond the grave. And yes, there is strength in faith. On this day, we say with Job, Adonai Natan, that God you have given. You have given us a very precious life and soul and spirit who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and true and enduring in Ben's life, on this day, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you have now taken away. And we pray for the koach, the strength, 
to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we might acknowledge your sovereignty and your love. As we say, Yehishem Adonai Mivarach, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. In the Jewish calendar, we gather together this afternoon during the intermediary days of the festival of Sukkot, the Feast of Booths or of Tabernacles. The Torah instructs us to build a temporary structure, a sukkah, a booth, a sukkah that is intended to be open on each of its four sides. It is intended to be vulnerable, to be unprotected, subject to the winds and the rains of the season. Yet we are told that this very place that we must dwell in for seven days, vulnerable and unprotected from life's storms, in so many ways is a symbol of life, a symbol of the fragility of all that we possess. At the same time, the sukkah is also seen as a shelter, a refuge, a sanctuary, protecting all that is precious to us. So it is during this holiday our tradition teaches that we should read from the book of a Bible called Kohelet or Ecclesiastes. And one of the most famous passages from Ecclesiastes is a reflection upon the human experience and how to live meaningfully and with purpose. Chapter three of Ecclesiastes was also put to music under the title, Turn, Turn, Turn. And this afternoon, may these words now give us insight, give us wisdom, and give us strength. The words of Kohelet of Ecclesiastes, read by our tradition during these days. For everything there is a season. There is a time for every experience under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what has been planted a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to forget and a time to remember. This is a moment for us to remember, to recall with abundant love the life and the soul and the neshama of our dear friend, Ben Wolf. As shared so lovingly by, by you, Amanda, Ben was in so many ways the love that came out of heartache. His birth name was Isaac Bears Wolfowitz, the son of Holocaust survivors. His parents met at a bar in Germany after they survived multiple concentration camps and his father lost his wife and children. It was, yes, in so many ways, like a one-night stand that lasted a lifetime. And upon coming to this country from Germany, he took the name Benny Isaac Wolf. The good name, the good name that he acquired through the many good deeds that he accomplished throughout his life. We remember them, Ben, this afternoon as a kind and a loving soul a mensch, a caring and compassionate human being, 
a Gutta Nishama, one whose essence was bound up with making others happy and bringing joy into the life of those that he loved. And especially in recent years when he struggled with so many health issues, when asked how he was doing, he was so quick to respond by asking about you, about your well-being and putting the well-being of others before his own. And certainly for all of those who knew Ben and were touched by his life, you are also well aware that he was in many ways that neat freak, that everything had its place. A big planner and organizer, always attentive to the details, saving everything that was important to him, all the way to his talus, all the way to his prayer shawl that was literally at his feet when he passed away. As all of you well know, his, one of his greatest passions was collecting and watching some of those scary class, classic monster movies along with all of the time favorites, such as Star Wars, Superman, Phantom of the Opera. And along with his movies, Ben was a big fan of Neil Diamond. He felt such a very special connected to him and that they both shared the challenge of living with Parkinson's disease. Ben was also a devoted and caring member of the Jewish community and something that I came to know personally over many, many years as his rabbi. And even amidst the limitations brought upon him by Parkinson's, he continued to find so much meaning in the High Holy Days, doing his best to chant or sing along with the service. From the tallest at his feet, to his granddaughter Emily chanting her bat mitzvah Torah portion to Ben, to wearing his tefillin at the Western Wall. Jewish tradition brought him so much meaning, brought him so much strength. And yes, one of his greatest loves, as noted by Becky and Amanda, was also going to plays that he loved seeing with you many of them, from Beauty and the Beast to Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat to Jesus Christ Superstar, Cats, Wicked, Lion King, Footloose, Annie, Phantom of the Opera, Rent, and so many more. Each of these productions brought him such great joy, and especially when he could share it with you. So we're now, Amanda, going to have an opportunity to Hear a song from The Lion King entitled, He Lives in You, and a Broadway play I know that had much personal meaning as well.
Those that we love can never be more than a thought away. For as long as there is memory, they live in our hearts to stay. So I'd like to share these personal reflections and thoughts and memories from Ben's brother, Harry. I'm so thankful that I had the chance to give my dear brother Ben a virtual hug, a chance to tell him I loved him and hoped to see him for Hanukkah twice over the last week, once with Amanda's help, and then again just last Saturday morning during Abe and Ruth's visit. I arranged the call with Amanda after connecting with her in August during her Remembrance Project. I was offered the honor to share my thoughts about what being the child of a survivor meant to me. No doubt, had Ben in a position to field that question, he would have put his whole heart and soul into the answer as he did with everything. I spent a lot of time thinking about the answer and about the early years in the Wolf household and my older brother, Ben, and as I watch my grandchildren grow. So I'd like to invite Becky for you to come forward, please. You never said I'm leaving. You never said goodbye. You were gone before I knew it and only God knew why. A million times I needed you. A million times I cried. If I love alone could have saved you, you never would have died. In life I loved you dearly. In death I love you still. In my heart you hold a place that no one could ever fill. It broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of me went with you the day God took you home. Our hearts reach out this afternoon with much love to each and every one of you, to all of Ben's dear family, to Tammy and Dan, to Becky, to Amanda, to Hunter, Michaela, Emily, Harry and Kate and Abe and Ruth, all of those that were touched by Ben's life and his spirit. For those we love, don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and very, very dear. As we now say, Zecher Tzadik Livracha. May the good name, the Shem Tov, of our very dear friend, Ben Wolf, always be remembered for us on this day for much goodness and for blessing. And now we say together, Amen. In the rising of the sun and it's going down, with love we will always remember him. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of the winter, with love we will always remember him. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of the spring, with much love, we will always remember him. In the rustling of leaves, the beauty of autumn, of this season of the year, with much love, we will always remember him. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, with love, we will always remember him. When we are weary and in need of strength, with love, we will always remember him. When we are lost and sick at heart, with much love, we will always remember him. When we have joys that we yearn to share, with much love, we will always remember him. For so long as we live, O God, he too shall continue to live. For he is now a part of each and every one of us. So on this day, with much love, we have now remembered him. We are now going to turn together to our 
concluding memorial prayers, the words of El Malay Rahamim, of God of mercy, God of compassion, to be followed by the words of the mourner's Kaddish. And like to ask for these closing words and blessings, if we could all rise together, please. El Malay Rahamim Shochen Bam Romim. Am Semenucha Nechona Tachat Kanfe Hashina. Im Kedoshim Tohorim Kazoha Harakia Masirim. Et Nishmat Yitzchak Beresh Ben Moshe Halevi. Shehalach La Ulamo. Baal Harachamim. Yasterehu Beseter Kenafav La Ulamim. Vet Sur Betsura Hayim. Et Nishmato. Adonai hu nachalato v'yanuach b'shalom al mishkavo v'nomar. Amen. El malei rachamim, compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to the soul and spirit of Yitzchak Beresh and Moshe Halevi to Ben Wolf who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence. Let his soul now be bound up in a bond of eternal and everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he now rest bishalom in peace. And we say, Amen. As we will now turn to the sacred words of the mourner's Kaddish that you can find once again in your booklets. Yitgadal v'yitgadash shemei raba v'olma divrach hirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayedechol beit Yisrael v'agala uvizman kari v'meru amen yehe shemei raba mevorach le'olam ulalmei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpaar v'yitramam v'yitnase v'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal Shmei de Kudisha Brihu Leela min kol birchata veshirata Tush bichata venechemata da amiran belma vimeru amen Yehe shlama raba min shemaya vechayim Alenu vial kol Yisrael vimeru amen O se shalom bimromav Huya a se shalom Alenu vial kol Yisrael vimeru amen O se shalom bim romav, may the one who creates peace and harmony and wholeness and well-being in the high heavens above, may a measure of shalom, of peace and of comfort and healing now be brought to all of those who remember with love. For life is not measured by the number of breaths that we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. And to all these words we now say, Amen. We can all be seated. The staff and the personnel now here at Shalom Memorial Park We'll now put the final cover upon Ben's grave. And upon completion of their work, our tradition teach us that we have an obligation, a sacred obligation, a mitzvah to perform. And that is to be able to step forward and to participate in this moment of memory. And we do so and we honor Ben by coming forward and taking three shovelfuls of earth as a way of expressing your love. For at this moment of mitzvah, of sacred obligation, that we don't expect anything in return. We do, but we do for the sake of love. And so in just a few moments, we'll have the opportunity, each of us, to perform this mitzvah, this sacred obligation.
Friends, this concludes the services here at the graveside. In just a few moments, the cemetery staff will complete the task of filling the grave. If you wish to stay here and witness them doing so, you certainly may, and if not, you may return to your cars. But again, this does conclude the services, and our condolences.